ValveTime.net. Hi, and welcome to episode 11 of Valve Time Top 5. A while back, we used episode 10 of Top 5 to talk about our favorite official Team Fortress 2 maps, that is, levels created by Valve themselves. As many of us know, official maps are only part of the story, however, as 23 of the 70 map roster were created in some form by the community before being officially added into the game. And yes, we accidentally said 50 maps in the last episode. With so many great maps on offer, we thought it was fairly important to split the list of best maps into two halves to talk about them on a more level playing field. For this episode, we've once again teamed up with Frozen of TF2Maps.net to help us work out which community maps are interesting, influential, or just plain fun enough to make it into our top five. Now, let's get started. Number five. It might not be the instant favorite a lot of people instantly think of when you mention King of the Hill, but Lakeside definitely stands out to us as one of the best examples of the game mode at work. The relatively small and simple map is easy to learn and fun to navigate, providing mobile classes like the Scout and Soldier the opportunity to take advantage of the numerous cleverly placed balconies and platforms spread throughout the level. At the same time, more straightforward classes like the Pyro and Heavy are able to control the map's key areas with ease as engineers and snipers set up shop close to the capture point allowing just about everyone to feel important and welcome regardless of which class they prefer to play. It certainly didn't introduce the Egyptian theme, but we feel like Late Side would definitely win a contest of who wore it better. After being converted into the fourth Halloween map, it was the first of its kind to feature a totally overhauled visual style, unlike the other four which received minor changes making it just a bit more special in our eyes. While Merasmus might not be the most fun boss to fight, or the most balanced, Ghost Fort did introduce a whole bunch of interesting event-only mechanics, including the Wheel of Fate and the Bottomless Pit which turned a pool that was once a nightmare for Pyros into an absolute dream, perfect for air blasting people to their doom. While both versions of the map are extremely balanced with generally solid gameplay, Lakeside is a little let down by a few key areas, including the extremely open capture point. Given that so many players will be shooting up the hills towards the point, a lot of what is being thrown regularly ends up in the valleys on either side, making it a bit of a death trap. The same goes for the balconies located just beyond, as while they can occasionally make good spots for engineers and snipers, they're generally a little too open for our liking, sadly keeping Lakeside comfortably at number 5 on our list. Stay classy, Merasmus. Soldier! You are the worst roommate! Number 4. Just like Badlands in number 5 of our last episode, number 4 brings us to our token competitive map, this time in the form of the very excellent Process. Despite being one of the most recent officialized maps on the list, Process definitely deserves its spot because it offers some of the strongest and most balanced gameplay Team Fortress 2 has ever seen. The map also takes one of the least explored visual styles, gorgeous clean, bright industrial style, and replicates it in a simple yet effective format. All of that said, while Process does offer excellent 5CP gameplay and one of our favorite visual themes, it's far from the most adventurous maps on either of our lists. While that might sound a little pretentious, hear us out. Process is extremely safe. Most of its key gameplay ideas feel like slightly altered replications from other maps previously released by Valve, including Granary's Mid and Badlands Spire. Now, there is certainly nothing wrong with replicating or reincorporating proven design concepts. Games and media do it all the time, we just wish the map was a little more original in how it presents itself. But let's not forget, the map plays superbly well, and that's what really matters. Number 3. This is where we get a little weird, as Nick and Frozen weren't actually able to separate Process from its brother Snakewater, eventually having to stick both of them together at number 4 and number 3, even if we consider both to be on equal footing with each other, just as once. Like Process, Snakewater features excellent, extremely balanced gameplay, while also featuring a unique visual style that appears as an interesting blend of alpine woods and industrial concrete, making it a fan favorite amongst public and professional players alike. While Process plays superbly yet feels a little tried and tested, i.e. pretty safe, Snakewater features a simplified layout which might not be quite as good for competitive play as its slightly older cousin, but it definitely looks far better and feels a little more suitable for larger servers consisting of more players and classes. We feel Process and Snakewater are so closely linked on so many levels that we've actually run out of things to say on the topic. Onwards, but not upwards. That was the last episode. Number 2. It's safe to say some of us have a thing for snow-themed Team Fortress 2 maps and snowy landscapes in general, something which benefits Coldfront rather well. 
As the community's most balanced 5CP map, it was never really a question of whether Coldfront would make it onto our list as much as where we should place it. With generally fun gameplay arenas and effective choke points that control the flow of the battle excellently, it's pretty amazing to think the gameplay of Coldfront is somehow overshadowed by its superb visual design. As far as community maps go, Coldfront seemingly perfects both the mysterious spy tech theme and harsh snowy landscapes while creating a clean and extremely believable transition between the two. Using some of the most memorable and appropriate landmarks from any TF2 map, including a fun reference to Dr. Strangelove, Coldfront is one of those maps that you never really forget about. That said, the map can feel a little too flat in places, with only a small number of ledges and balconies present in the entire map. All things considered, Coldfront does more or less everything well to some degree, providing yet another excellent example of why the 5CP game mode is so well balanced and loved. Number 1 over the past two episodes, we've talked a bunch about fun and influential maps, but we're confident in saying few come close to Man Manor and Mountain Lab. We're technically cheating a little with this choice, given that most of the layout was designed by Valve before being art passed by community mappers YM, Rexy, and 3DNJ as part of a TF2Maps.net competition back in 2010. But we're not too worried about that given how much both variants of the map stand out. The simple three capture point attack defend layout makes the map extremely memorable and easy to get to grips with while also providing relatively fast rounds that can be over and repeated within a matter of minutes. Like the rest of the Halloween themed maps, the layouts of both the normal and spooky variants of the level are more or less the same, but their distinct strong visual styles help differentiate both in interesting ways. Mountain Lab helped introduce many assets from the swamp-themed content pack, and Man Manor more or less established how a Halloween map in Team Fortress 2 is supposed to look, effectively building upon the basic foundations set down by Harvest a year prior. While the inclusion of Team Fortress 2's very first boss character was all Valve's doing, his introduction helped make Man Manor in particular one of the most memorable and standout maps in the entire game, setting a bar for quality and spooky silliness that continues to challenge even the most recent Halloween additions. Neither of the maps is perfect, given how spammy some of the upper routes can get and how some flanking routes aren't utilized as much as they should be, but we easily love both enough to warrant the number one spot on our list. The layout and themes are just that memorable. With probably the most important origin of any official map, that is a direct collaboration between Valve and the community, it's hard for us to argue any other community map even gets close to deserving this spot. And that wraps up what we think about the top 5 community maps for Team Fortress 2. With so many great maps on offer, your personal list will most definitely deviate from ours, and we want to know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to also leave topic suggestions you would like to see used in future episodes of Valve Time Top 5. We're always looking for new ideas, so you never know, it may just pop up one day. We want to give another special thanks to Frozen and the TF2Maps.net for helping us sort out this list. If you haven't already checked out their website, TF2Maps.net features one of the largest collections of community-made custom maps available on the internet, and it's definitely the best place to start if you're looking to get into creating your own maps for Team Fortress 2. Don't forget to subscribe to our own YouTube channel, to follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and to get involved over on the ValveTime.net forums. If you enjoy our content, feel free to share this video with your friends and to check out our previous episodes of Top 5. As always, thanks for watching and bye for now.